is privatised in the last 20 years. Like that seems, and then we know historically that's how it's worked. Like in the in the Cold War, Operation Mockingbird, the CIA paid uh, was it 3,000 3, 3, journalists to, uh, to to basically write smear and disinformation campaigns against people who are uh, against the interests of the United States government, right? And so we know that there's been infiltration in media in the last 50 years, and the idea that that just ended in like with the fall of the Berlin Wall and all of that just stopped, it's, you know, I think that would be ludicrous to suggest that, right? And so with this war on terror, like we always hear like terrorists, Al-Qaeda, Bush, Saddam, I mean, um, you know, like Osama, the underpants bomber on Christmas Day, right? Well, that kind of subliminal messaging and that kind of disinformation, right? A lot of it is truthful, but I mean, some of it is truthful, but most of it, I would argue, isn't truthful or it distorts re reality, as, as many people would see it. Um, that requires, obviously, people who are willing to collaborate. And, you know, a lot of journalists, I would say, are probably kind of contractors. Eh? They're up, up for sale, like, where if someone has an agenda, well, how much will you pay me? And if they're within the framework of our, and we all own, if we're Canadians, we all own CBC, right? That's like public property. Like we wouldn't go down to the town hall and just like start smashing it with a brick with a kind of sledgehammer, right? But that's kind of what we would argue is kind of going on within the framework of the current, you know, our public pro property, the Crown Corporation of the CBC. And so in a way, this is a critique of that. And so I've made these, um, these categories. And so I kind of invented like the sixth estate. So you know, like on CBC, they have the fifth estate. So the fourth estate is supposed to be like the establishment. The fifth estate is like the critique, right? But then, you know, I would argue it doesn't quite go far enough and in a way cover, you know, omits or covers up <laughs> certain vital criteria. So at the moment, I, I'm connecting this to a... Uh, to these, which is BBC Five, and this is kind of where I was inspired. You know, I grew up in England with watching the BBC all the time, and I kind of think, feel quite sad that it's kind of, in my view, gone down the drain since the, in the, since Blair actually. And actually, it's quite interesting when we talk about private media. Like when Tony Blair kind of wanted to come into power for the Labour Party in Britain, he flew to Australia and met with Rupert Murdoch, and uh, John Pilger's documented this quite well in his book uh, Freedom Next Time. I think it's Freedom Next Time, one of his books, and. Um, and so Blair went to Australia and basically went to Murdoch's, Rupert Murdoch, who owns like Fox News and the History Channel and so on, and basically said, like, can you market me? I'm, I'm a product. Like, I want, to, I want the electorate to vote for me. And, you know, you basically control people's minds because you own, like, a, a vast preponderance of the media in, <coughs> in Britain and elsewhere. And so you, when you have, like, your politicians who are supposed to be accountable to the people going to a private media conglomerate and asking them to market them to the people, anyway, uh, the crux of it is that the BBC had a lot of kind of left of centre people, I would say quite principled journalists, who Blair fired because they were basically showing that the government were lying about the war on terror. And so now I've seen in BBC there's a whole new kind of, um, they, they, he's kind of transplanted kind of what people in Britain call Blairites into the BBC, who kind of, I would argue, produce kind of unsatisfactory journalism. And interestingly, a lot of those people who moved from the BBC actually went to work for Press TV. Press TV is the, actually the Iranian state media, but has increasingly become popular in, in the West because it offers a critical perspective of kind of Western politics and so on. And so anyway, so BBC Five, right? I came, I stumbled across this on the internet, and it's uh, basically BBC Five is kind of what we've this idea that we're kind of getting at, which is, um, you know, so what if the BBC is kind of uh, infiltrated or is being sabotaged? This this piece of public property. Uh, why not be our own BBC? You know, why not, and, and this is kind of what we're doing now. Like, why not be our own CBC? And so I'd encourage you, like BBC5.tv um, is is the website, and it's it's got it's very well done. I mean, I went to I went to CRDC yesterday and said like, well, well, we want to be this, like we want to create this, and they were like, oh, this is like a ten thousand dollar operation. He told me that he was like, if you you know, this requires like really uh, sophisticated. And so we're trying our best to, to live up to our friends in England. I think Tony's kind of indirectly in, in connection through an event he went to in Paris with some of the people who contribute to this. But if you go into like, um, so they, they, you know, they have like TV channels and you can go into the various sections and, and it's, it's very illuminating and interesting, I found. And so, um, and so going back to, to our kind of, um, so at the moment it's at www rcbc.ning.com and we're hoping to get a better domain name like purchase a domain name that will actually come up on Google at the moment if you Google this it won't actually uh, really resonate to the surface at the moment but um, and so yeah I created RCBC TV and then 
And this is the great thing with the internet. I mean, you can imagine like 50 years ago, the idea we're just going to invent our own media station. You know, that wasn't possible, right? But even already, I've made like CBC Live. So, I mean, um, we're having a few issues getting the camera into this computer because it's a Mac. But soon we can like stream, we can like stream live, eh? And in a way, we're going to like, you know, we're kind of going to rift off the logo as, logo as well. Like, who does the logo belong to? But it's kind of our property, actually. It doesn't belong to the journalists of CBC. It's our logo, right? We're the people who pay for the CBC. We own the CBC, and that's our logo. And if we feel unsatisfied, what's the, you know, with the internet now, like the kind of laws and the politics all around this completely change, and that's why the internet, in a way, is so democratic, because we can kind of seize back what's ours, if you like, like, if you want to think of it of that way. And so we can, like, stream live. If we go to, like, CBC Live, it can, we could basically do our own CBC, do our own shows, right? And likewise, CBC TV. I ha actually, and then in here right now, I have, um, I edited this over Christmas. This was from last semester. Uh, Professor Anthony J. Hall and the globalization of the 9-11 truth movement. Tony had been in Paris at an event called Vers la Verite, where people came from all around the world, including Cynthia McKinney, the former US presidential candidate, Annie Machon, who's a MI5 whistleblower, and many other distinguished uh, people who, who don't believe what the US government told the world happened on September 11, 2001. And so this was Tony coming back and kind of reflecting on that, and it's very interesting. And that can be found at our Vimeo site also. So while I'm here, I'll just show you. So if I type in Vimeo, So we have like a Vimeo channel now, and it's uh, it's uh, vimeo.com slash channels slash globalization. And it is kind of like, like Tony sometimes uses the analogy with the internet, it's kind of like the Wild West or something, like you have to come and like stake your turf, right? Like, I mean, we got a pretty good name there, like we're, we are globalization in a way on Vimeo. And these new sites keep emerging, like Yahoo now only allows like 10 minute movies, so we've kind of... <coughs> migrated to, uh, to Vimeo <coughs> and so uh, this is kind of what I'm constructing and this is our friend Splitting the Sky, he's the one who uh, last class we talked about he, um, in ca on, on the advice of his, his former lawyer Ramsey Clark who's the former Attorney General of the United States and on, on the advice of lawyers against war when the government disobeyed the law in a sense by, because Canada has a Crimes Against Humanity and War Crimes Act and allowed Bush into Canada <coughs> like that Canada has legislation that says you you can't let people who who confess publicly. I tortured people. You can't, uh, you know, people who committed uh, war crimes of aggressive warfare. You can't actually allow them into Canada. There's there's laws against that, regardless of whether the politicians like that individual or agree with that individual individual or their ideologies converge. Like the law in a democracy should should be dominant, right? And so splitting this guy essentially is is now quite getting quite famous in the world for because he tried to do a citizen's arrest on George Bush. He tried to, he approached the police and this raised issues with like, well, who's obstructing who? Like, I have the law on my side and you're protecting the criminal in a way, like, and you, you're really, in a way, representing the politicians, it could be argued, right? And so he's, anyway, so you can kind of catch up with his story on here and if you Google splitting the sky, it's quite easy to educate yourself on, on what's going on with splitting the sky. And so we're, we're slowly, uh, but surely, um, getting some, uh, some, some of these, these class uh, videos up on the internet and it, on the old globalization study site which I now have a, an external hard drive with all the old archives in is um, so if, if you type like globalization on globalization studies on the uh, on Google right it's the first one that comes up still so we have this like domain name and um, so like this has a history of this class in 2002, it goes back to 2002 and uh, through this site, this is the, the kind of official globalization studies site that we're kind of reworking and rebranding at the moment. <clears throat> and if you go even into GS1 point, version 1.0, you can go kind of right back to the history of the class and um, there's various links and interesting things you can, you can uh, learn from on there. And so definitely one feature I enjoyed about this class is um, the kind of fusion of my two interests with like the kind of social justice and history, politics, but then with like the technology. And you know, I think that if you think about like our generation in the future, it's kind of like the basic ABC and basic lit literacy is going to be using this thing. And, and you know, it's quite easy to learn using the technology, using the software and so on. So this is where like the archives were traditionally held. held. And I've just Now each one of those is a three hour class. Like yeah. just scroll right down. It's a it's kind of a huge... Uh 